Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And you guys are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another unboxing video. We're gonna try and do these a little bit more frequently, so there might be less in each video, rather than what we have been doing last year, which was waiting for you know a shipment of like 20 firearms to come in. So in a lot of these, we might do like 10 minute, you know, four or five packages or whatever more frequently. So anyway, this will be our first one. Let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, guys, starting us off first, today we got in an interesting rifle. This is a British number one Mark III Star. Specifically, this is an FR rifle from the Ishapur plant in about 1953, which saw service in the Indian military. Now, this is in the original 303 pattern. Uh, this is before the Ishapur production of the 762 NATO rifles. Now, Ishapur is a company founded in India in about 1905 and was really the only main uh, at home arms manufacturing. Uh, facility that India had. Now they established their independence in the 1940s and about 1947. So they would go into their very first production of rifles were first the British in 303, but quickly they would go to the 7.62 NATO to match the popularity of the cartridge being used around the world. So very cool rifle, much more availability of the ammunition, obviously in the 7.62, but to get sort of a nice crossover of the original British 303 used in Indian service, this is a cool rifle. So I wanted to take the time to share it with you guys before jumping into the boxes. Okay, starting us off, we have our first one that comes to us from a customer in New Jersey. So thank you so much for selling this one to us. First off, we have a Ruger GP100. This looks like it's in the four inch barrel length with a six round cylinder, stainless finish, 357 Magnum in the original box. The GP100 is a very popular revolver, would come about to replace the service line from Ruger. Gosh, I don't remember when they set the mark in it about, do you recall, 1990s? Yeah, that sounds right. Probably about the 1990s. Yeah. I'll double check that. Um, a very robust cast frame, built like a tank, very heavy, nice weight, which really helps with the recoil. Chambered in 357, of course, will also shoot 38 Special, which 38 in these things, very soft shooters. They made these things in 22 LR, nine millimeter. Pretty sure yeah, they made them in a nine so, millimeter, yeah. 10 millimeter. Pretty yes. sure they made them in a 10 yes. millimeter as well. So lots of different rounds have been used in this firearm. What do you think about the condition of that one? It really doesn't have any marks on it, Chris. I would say it's excellent condition. That's what the customer said, and I would agree, so let's move on to the next one. Next up is one from a customer in Massachusetts. Let's see what we got in here. What do we have there? Looks like we have a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 380EZ. The EZ models, uh, because the slide is so easy to pull, uh, these are very popular in our store in 380 and 9mm. Uh, a lot of people have tendonitis or arthritis, difficulty pulling back a slide on any other semi-automatic. Uh, Smith & Wesson came up with these to address that. Uh, single stack 380, um, very light, manageable, and as I said, very easy to rack the slide. It has the rail in the bottom if you'd like to put a light or a laser. Um, very quick sellers. Very, very, very popular. Also with elderly customers who have weakened hand strength, very, very popular uh, pistol. So uh, these are great. A lot of people have a hard time with a Glock or an M&P, like the, the standard M&P or a shield or a single stack concealed carry that tends to have a heavier slide. We put this in their hand and they're just shocked at how easily they can bring that back. You have assisting loading tabs on the magazine. So just a great usable firearm, which I'm really glad Smith & Wesson came out with this because it's made possible for a lot more people to get into semi-automatics instead of being stuck with revolvers and things like that due to weakened hand strength. So uh, anyway, what do you think about the condition on that one? Just a couple very minor marks uh, on the slide. Uh, I would put it at the high end, very good to maybe the low end of excellent. Customer said very good and I would agree with that one, so let's move on. All right guys, and to finish off the short video, we have one larger box coming to us from a customer in Rhode Island. One, two, got more than we bargained for, three. All right, 
let's see what we got here. Starting us off that first one. You tell us what we have here. Red, red eagle. Yes, yeah, so what we have here is a Ruger Mark II uh, 22 long rifle in the traditional configuration that the original uh, Mark and Mark I were configured in. Very popular 22 target pistol. Uh, the Mark IIs are known to have the best of all the 1, 2, 3, and 4 triggers. Uh, very nice plinker, has a tapered barrel, uh, but still very, very accurate. Now, what do you think about the condition of that one? Uh, there is some corrosion on the bolt, Chris. Other than that, it looks pretty good. Uh, I would say good condition. Customer didn't look like they put in the paperwork, so we don't really know for sure what they said, but uh, I would, yeah, I don't know if that's actually corrosion. It looks like dried factory oil, okay. actually, to me. Um, I would say, yeah, there's some wear marks on this side of the firearm. I would I would be okay with very good given it's it's a Mark II, isn't it? Yeah, yes. given it's an older Mark II. Good to very good somewhere in there is fine, but we'll see what the customer said. All right, next up, uh, Randy's getting into this. It actually looks like there's probably another Mark series pistol in here to complete the story. There's some magazines in there. What we have here, Chris, is the Ruger Mark IV Target. Uh, Mark IV being their latest iteration. Uh, this is the stainless steel bull barrel target crowned. These are very, very accurate target pistols. Um, very easy disassembly. Uh, push a single button and you can take the whole gun apart and reassemble it in seconds. Uh, as everyone who's ever taken apart anything up to a Mark III, um, they're hard to get apart and they're even harder to get back together. So Ruger addressed that issue. Um, by putting just in a little push button takedown. So okay. now super easy to take apart, maintain, yep. and clean. Yeah, nice heavy target barrel. What do you think about the condition on that one? There's one little mark by the serial number and an, another small scrape on the barrel, but I would say um, the high end of very good, Chris. Yeah, I would agree. And again, holding it out at arm's length, I can't really see. That would be excellent. Yeah, I would say this is excellent condition. Very good to excellent is fine. I love these little target, especially the Mark IV, the heavy barrels are nice. Yes. All right, third one here is another handgun. There is another GP100. This one is, looks like an older one, and this one's actually blued. Um, we don't see, you don't see too many of the GP100 is blue. Most of the ones that come through here are stainless. This is, we don't have, can't give me the tape measure. This looks like a seven and a half. Is he right? It's no, six. it's a six. I don't know why that threw me off. Maybe it's a, a six inch barrel on there with an aftermarket white sight there, easier to pick, way easier to pick up. But nice uh, six round capacity. This one is also in a 357, so not gonna go too much into that because we just talked about it. Condition wise on that one, what do you think? Just few wear marks on the top of the rib there, Chris. Um, I would say again, probably the high end of very good. Yeah, very good to, yeah, I would say very good on this one for sure. So there's that, another GP100 blue with a six inch barrel. And last but not least for this box. Got it. Side by side, you know much about these? Savage, oh, right? A little bit. That's a uh, Fox, yeah, Fox model. model uh, B. Fox model B. Savage arms, gauge. side by side. Yeah, I don't know actually the the date or the age of the uh, when the, when they had the Fox models. Obviously, it's older, probably 60s or 70s. Uh, it's got some nice engraving on it. Uh, 16 gauge side by side. Not very common. Not a very common. Uh, shotgun to have in a in a side-to-side -side shotgun but uh, it's in uh, decent condition other than the crack and yeah, the stock there. Yeah there is a crack there. in the stock and the rest of the stock. Now, given the given the crack in the stock I mean I would probably bump this thing down to good. Yeah. Uh, even though the, the bluing and everything is fine on it but 
Uh, a crack, especially in the wrist on a shotgun, you're gonna that's gonna widen with use, so that's gonna need some attention to be repaired or replaced. Yeah, definitely. That's probably started as a little crack and it's definitely expanded. So that'll get worse to the point where the stock will just basically become unus unusable eventually uh, after use if it's not addressed. So yeah, good condition on that one because of that. Um, but anyway, yeah, Fox side by side. We've seen several of these come into our store over the years. Uh, but interesting, I like the machine screw on the top of the, right. the vent. <laughs> Dealing with some quality. Anyway, that'll end us off with this video. All right, guys, well, that'll end it up with this video. A big thank you to all of our customers on WeBuyGuns.com. Again, if you have anything you're looking to sell, a firearm or firearms collection, go ahead and put them through our site, WeBuyGuns.com. That's where we are getting the firearms that we unbox in this video. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed, please let us know by hitting that like button. Please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification button so you are aware when we are posting new content. We're going to leave you guys off there. I am Chris. And I am Randy. And we will see you guys next time. <laughs> no! Oh, All right! Ooh. Look at that! Shipping comforter! My son's birthday present! <laughs>